Carolina earthquakes are mostly harmless, but they can get your attention, especially when there are 18 of them in a row. After another one this weekend, 7 Weather Chief Meteorologist Christy Henderson investigates the possible cause of the Midland Swarm. The Elgin Lugoff area in Kershaw County features good people, good barbecue, and lately a good amount of earthquakes. I was in my bed sleep and it shook so hard. I thought the world was coming to an end. I was like, oh Lord, oh Lord. I ran to the front and I ran to the back and I didn't see anything. So I said, well, then that must be an earthquake. A magnitude 3.3 shook the area on December 27th, and since then, 17 others have followed, all very weak but noticeable. We started feeling more of these aftershocks, and they were coming like daily, around the same time, wee hours of the morning. And I started like paying attention to it. I'm like, we're really having earthquakes. Like, is anybody paying attention to this yeah. at all? But then these earthquakes continued for about three weeks. So that's when I got interested. Dr. Pradeep Talwani is a geophysicist who has studied Carolina earthquakes for the past 50 years, just not so many at one time. We have lo what we call local stress buildup, the local ways of creating stresses. And if you have a place where you can build up a very large local stress, you can generate a large earthquake. If you have small amount of stress, you have small earthquakes. Every earthquake has one thing in common. Rocks are pushed against each other and stressed to the point at which they slip. They are stressed out. So one push from something somewhere can release a lot of energy under the ground that we feel as an earthquake. We aren't on the edge of a tectonic plate like California, so we don't tend to see those large earthquakes. Instead, we're on top of a plate, so the cracks and rocks below the ground are much smaller and our earthquakes are comparatively weak. The Eastern Piedmont Fault System runs right through this area. In fact, it stretches from Alabama all the way to Virginia. But why were they all happening within five miles of each other, and why so many of them? We had two lucky breaks. Um, when I was teaching uh, and we had discovered this fault system, we wanted to know what was going on. And sure enough, we found there was a, you know, a very nice structure where the, all these earthquakes are taking place. And then the other interesting thing was uh, that right next to the structure is that's where the watery river does a zigzag number. So my hypothesis right now, what I'm guessing at is that some of the, it might be related to some of the uh, fluids that are going there, which are causing this continuation of these earthquakes. These earthquakes certainly raised eyebrows, lots of curiosity and some worry, but as long as they stay weak, most are taking the shaking in stride. In Elgin, Chief Meteorologist Christy Henderson, 7 News. And while we usually only experience small quakes, there have been a couple of damaging ones in South Carolina's history. If you want to see a list of past big earthquakes, we do have that for you on WSPA.com. All right, Christy's joining me now. Christy, that was a great story, really informative about all these quakes we've been experiencing. Yeah, thank you. I was personally curious because, yes. again, you get that many earthquakes in one area. Yep. Something has to be causing it, right? It's exactly. not just, oh, it's another earthquake. Yeah. So hopefully we got to the bottom of it. And sure. Dr. Talwani said he doesn't know for sure, but it's his hypothesis. So it's nice to hear mm -hmm. an expert's take on what's of going course. on. Of course, and we're thankful they've been small quakes. Yes, exactly. That's good news. Exactly.